and the interaction between the crowd and the state of the military is really where a lot of the interesting stuff, um, a lot of the interesting gameplay circumstances come out. Uh, basically, military at first are unaware. So they don't know there's an assassin in town. Um, another state they have is suspicious. That's the state where they don't really know there's an assassin in town, but they know there's a guy doing something weird and they're gonna pay attention to that. They put their hand on their weapon. They're like, maybe this guy's up to no good. And then there's a state which is informed and that's when the military knows there's an assassin in town, he's dressed in white, you know, he, he climbed buildings, there's like a wanted poster out. And basically as you play through the game, if you've done assassinations in a city, the state of the military will evolve. So, for example, at the beginning of the game, if you can climb up a building and you know the crowd will go, hey, what's he doing, is he crazy? The military is gonna kind of look and be suspicious, but they're not gonna go attack you because you know there are a lot of crazy people and it's a third crusade and they have worse things to worry about. But later on in the game, after there's been an assassin around and the crowd points out, hey, there's a guy climbing the wall, the military will look and then they'll go, it's the assassin. Okay, well, actually, you led me to my next question perfectly, but um, before I ask my next question, can you, I mean, Altair is a very charismatic character. He's somebody that we all want to know more about. What were your inspirations? Um, so, well, there's obviously the clan of the assassins, but when you're creating a main character for a game, you also want him to be bigger than life and have substance and not be an assassin like the, let's say, other assassins we've seen in other games and also not just be like the other members of the clan. He has to have a backstory, he has to have a personality. And um, so the team spent a lot of time thinking about what is it he's doing, what's his gameplay. And if you think about um, what he's doing, it made us think of a bird of prey, basically circling around, looking for your target, picking the key moment, swooping down, and then getting out. So all of the development for Altair was based on uh, a bird of prey or eagle. So um, if you look at his his outfit, it's got on his hood, he has a little point so that when you look at the shadow, it looks a bit like a beak, and the flaps flip up. So when he's doing his moves, like free running, which also seem very agile and kind of almost bird-like, um, you'll see the flaps flip up, and that will create kind of the impression of wings. Um, and actually, even the name Altair means the flyer in Arabic. So, just how acrobatic is he? Um, and what were your inspirations behind acrobatics? Very acrobatic. <laughs> um, well, so, this is like, I think, you know, when you're making a game and you have the opportunity to start a franchise from scratch, you kind of have the opportunity for um, the core team and, you know, Patrice and Arun and go, what do we think is cool? Okay, let's put that, let's do that. Um, so everyone on the team thinks free running is awesome and, you know, like, I would love to be able to do what those guys do. I don't know if you have all seen the cool videos and stuff, but it's, like, totally awesome. And we're like, we can probably do that now that it's next gen. We can, like, probably make all of those ledges interactive. Let's do it, let's do it. So um, that was the inspiration for the way he moves. And... Um, Maybe, you know, it's a pretty realistic game, it's historically based and stuff, but probably in the free running is a way we, is a place where we pushed a little bit beyond what's exactly humanly possible. So um, he can definitely grab onto ledges, he has extremely strong fingers. <laughs> okay. Now, um, I have to ask a question because obviously we all want to know, why have you been quiet for so long? Oh, yes. Well, um... We did show some stuff at X06, which is the last time I saw a lot of the people here. And we've been releasing screenshots, but of course, um, since we've been lucky enough to have a lot of interest and buzz, um, people want to see more, they want to see more, they want to see more. Um, and now we, we, what we want to do is really, well, two things. Our next big uh, time to show the game, we want it to be really different than what we showed at E3, and we want to give hands-on experience to the journalists. So we don't want to have another, you know, a year later you want to say, okay, now everyone gets to play on both consoles and see for themselves. So that's what we're going to do in July. And um, of course, we want to make the game. <laughs> Alright, perfect. Now, I, I guess my next question is going to be something more about Assassin's Creed in general. Because um, there's something so incredible about the game. I mean, obviously it's one of the most anticipated titles in 2007. What do you think makes it so... Great. What do you think people are just 
dying to hear more. Why? Um, well, this is, I think I got some questions that are similar to this before. Um, I think it's really because people can see that we tried to push, um, push the limits. We set the bar extremely high. We tried to push the limits of the way we're defining gameplay, um, the way AI feels, the way the controls feel. We really challenged ourselves in many different areas, and it's it's where that attention to detail really all comes together. So um, I have to say, like, there's a ton of things that I'm like super excited about, but they're all things that you ha you're going to have to experience during the first hands-on to really appreciate. Like, um, I remember recently we got we modeled like the we redid the ragdoll the way of throwing people, grabbing people and throwing people off of buildings, which you see in the trailer. We redid all of that so that it's really, really satisfying. You can aim exactly in the right spot. And as soon as we got that feature in, like working the way we wanted it to do, I spent like three hours uh, getting guards to chase after me, bringing them up to different buildings and throwing them off in a little different ways. So <laughs> I think it's like, maybe that reveals something not so good about me <laughs> as a gamer. But um, I think it's really like that kind of attention to detail and also that you're gonna be able to experience things that, you know, you just can't in real life. I don't think, you know, yeah. <laughs> All right, and still about Assassin's Creed. I mean, it's already inspired, if I'm not mistaken, three books and a movie. It's pretty unique, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, we're, we're really lucky that we got a lot, a lot of attention. I think people just get the concept and it's appealing to everyone. Actually, after last year's E3, um, we were approached by over five different movie studios and directors who want to be involved, and Ubisoft decided to keep the short as a project that we're doing internally. Um, but, and then also the book, which I, I've already read the first one, which is based on Altair's life before the game takes place. And there's two others after, and um, Stephen Barnes, who's the author, is doing an incredible job. So I think there's a lot that's really intriguing about the assassins themselves, and then there's also a layer that we're not really talking about, but we've been hinting about, that makes the franchise also really appealing. Now, I, I have to ask this, is this, the, is this the layer which is basically nothing is true and everything is permitted? <laughs> It all comes down to that saying. So nothing is true, everything is permitted is um, the assassin motto. As uh, I don't know if anyone here read the adventures of Marco Polo when they were younger, but anyways, Marco Polo actually came across the assassins in his travels. And that's one thing he reports back on in his book, is that that was their motto, nothing is true, everything is permitted. And um, one of the processes that Ubisoft is really making sure that there's a meaning to your game and that everything centers around a core concept to make sure they're, well, to make sure the experience of the game is meaningful and everything holds together. And we thought there's nothing cooler than the Assassin's Creed, essentially, nothing is true, everything is permitted to base the whole game around. Um, we play with that in the storyline, we play that in terms of the amount of freedom that the player has. and. Um, and also, in fact, it, it kind of is cool for video games because in a video game in general, nothing is actually true and everything is permitted. All right, well, I have two more questions for you. Uh, the first one everyone really wants to know, when does a game ship? The game is coming out this year, so right. end of 2007. All right, great. And my next question is a little bit more personal, okay, because you've been working really hard on this game. So we want to know what you're going to do when this game is finally finished. Aha! <laughs> um, well, we have a scotch tasting club at work, and uh, Claude Langlais, who's our technical director, has stocked this with about $15,000 worth of really good scotch, and I think at the end of the project we're going to have the mission of completely emptying that, and then going on vacation. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. And we look forward to hearing more about Assassin's Creed in the very near future. Thank you. Thanks.